Okay, so right now in the Dominican Republic, we have this issue with the canal. They're building a canal. They're trying to divert water from El Rio Masacre, which is the river that serves as a border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic um, in, in many, many different senses. So this river, we're trying to find out uh, why they're trying to divert that water. You know, obviously they, they want water, they want resources, a classic struggle between civilizations. But some people are also talking about uh, how this water is supposed to be used for a gold mine that the Clinton Foundation is uh, is operating. Uh, I'm not confirming that claim, but I, I do know that that's something that's, that's uh, floating around in the airwaves and is worth uh, considering. Either way, the, the dispute over this river uh, is all it's it's turning into an issue it's um, it's it's uh, exacerbating tensions between the countries and uh, the Dominican Republic is right now the underdog in a uh, information warfare in a, a defamation campaign against the country anytime we talk about this river uh, it's not the first time that we talk about the river it's the first time we talk about it in the sense of the canal but anytime that there's a news article about the Dominican Republic and Haiti, they always mention the 1937 massacre that happened. A uh, very, very, very ugly massacre in which the Dominican military, under the orders of Rafael Leonidas Trujillo, um, murdered uh, men, women, and children. So somewhere between tw uh, 12,000 to maybe 36,000 Haitians were killed. In these articles that try to defame the Dominican Republic, they say things like uh, Trujillo was a racist, Trujillo wanted to whiten Dominican society, and they, they, they attribute the massacre to some sort of uh, genocidal uh, race-based uh, mass murder. But this is one, one key piece of information that they leave out is that about one year prior to this massacre occurring, Trujillo had actually signed an agreement with Stenio Vincent, who at the time was the president of Haiti, another dictator uh, who was the president of Haiti. And he had signed an agreement with Stenio Vincent in 1936 because there was a large number, uh, I think somewhere between 30 to 40 Dominican exiles that were opponents of the Trujillo regime and they were living in Haiti. And he signed this agreement basically an illegal agreement where he gave away a lot of land uh, to Haiti in exchange for Stenio Vincent returning these exiles so that he could either prison, kill them, uh, censor them, you name it. And Stenio was about to proceed with returning these exiles to the Dominican Republic, but at the last minute uh, over, over protests that you know these people were gonna be sent to a certain death, he backtracked. And he told Trujillo, you know what? I know I told you I was going to send you these people, send you these exiles, but we're not going to do that any longer. So as an act of revenge, uh, what Trujillo did is he he ripped up that agreement he had signed with Stenio and he retraced the border back to its original um, original delineation instead of conceding that land. And not only that, not only did he push back the border, he sent the military in to kill any kind of Haitian, uh, any kind of Haitian inhabitant that was settled in that piece of land that he was going to give back to Stenio Vincent and Haiti. So that piece of information is really important because instead of admitting that the 1937 massacre was an event that was caused by uh, a dispute between Trujillo and Stenio Vincent, uh, instead of admitting that this happened because Trujillo wanted these exiles back and he was angry over it and, you know, uh, decided to commit this mass murder in an act of just megalomania, what the, the international media does is they paint the massacre as if it was something that the entire Dominican people co-signed on. Uh, when, you know, it, it would be nice for the international media to say, hey, this was an act committed by a tyrannical a monster of a human being called Rafael Lunias Trujillo. Uh, and instead of saying, you know, the Dominican people who were also abused by Trujillo during his 31 years of rule, um, they decide to, instead of admitting that, they decide to just kind of say that we're all a bunch of racist psychopaths that 
you know, are still in agreement with this horrible crime. Dominicans do not agree with that murder. Dominicans do not agree with the, the 36,000 people that were killed. Uh, men, women, and children killed with bayonets, stabbed in the neck. Uh, children grabbed by the legs and slammed against trees. Horrifying, horrifying stuff that you don't even want to talk about. Uh, I don't think anybody at the time or anybody right now agrees with what happened, but international media is not shy to make it look like we're all a bunch of racist psychopaths. And it's funny because when you look at Haiti I and mean, when you look at the Dominican Republic, Haiti is a completely homogenous society where the race, races did not mix, while the Dominican Republic is a is a heterogeneous society where the races did mix, like myself. I mean, you can look at me right now and you're able to tell that I have white traits, black traits. Um, you can tell that I have white skin, but you know, my hair is a little bit nappy. Um, and it's kind of crazy to think that people are out there saying that Dominicans like myself are in agreement with what happened. I think that's a really important thing to talk about. And I think all Dominicans should be aware of this because when you're being accused by these international elements and you're being accused of this to one day get robbed of your sovereignty, it's important for Dominicans to know this so that they can be armed in this information warfare when the, when the international media is trying to defame them. That's one thing I want to talk about uh, or that I did just talk about. And then there's another topic that I want to talk about and that is the Samana settlement. So my grandmother, Cecilia, Cecilia Martin, she was a, a slave, a descendant of a slave that lived in Louisiana and fled to a settlement in Samana, Dominican Republic. So the reason I want to talk about the settlement is because the settlement started or was created in 1824. Two years prior to this, in 1822, the Haitians had invaded the Dominican Republic, right? Haiti was the first independent uh, black republic. It was the first successful slave revolt in um, in uh, uh, the hemispheric history. So uh, when, the, when the slaves revolted in Haiti, right, they became a country of their own and they decided to advance to the east of Hispaniola where the, the, what, what would eventually become the Dominican Republic existed. In that plan, in that operation, the, the, one of the Haitian uh, leaders, last name Boyer, reached out to a man named Richard Allen in Pennsylvania. And Richard Allen was a, um, a freed slave, a freed man, who was the leader of the African Methodist Church in Pennsylvania. And he told Richard Allen, hey, we're, we're an island here in the Caribbean that abolished slavery. We're interested in having you guys come over here and leaving the United States. So Richard Allen, you know, took this news. He said, well, that's a great idea. We're going to go over there. We're going to take 6,000 African-Americans that have been, you know, freed from slavery. And we're going to go over there to settle in Samana. So once the 6,000 freed slaves arrive in Samana, and the same settlement that my grandmother Cecilia Martin would eventually go to, um, they they were very happy. They were very happy in the Dominican Republic. They liked the way they were treated there, uh, way more than they were being treated in um, you know in, the, in pre Civil War America. And they you know uh, had their own land, uh, started their farms, built their churches, and they were happy. But this is where the the problem occurred and and not a problem for in terms of uh the the african americans versus the dominican republic it was in terms of the african americans versus the haitians the haitians had created a system of of their own so um it wasn't that the haitians abolished slavery it was that they reversed it because in the haitian ideology it was a black supremacy ideology where they understood that they were going to repay the, the abuse that they received during slavery, and they were going to return the, flavor, the, return the favor uh, to, to the white man. But uh, in, in that operation, in that, in that reverse racism, that reverse slavery, they, they also made it illegal to, to espouse the ideas of that same white man, including Christianity. So when the African Americans that were invited to settle in Samana realized that the Haitians that had invited them over there uh, did not believe in Christianity. In fact, they outlawed Christianity. Uh, they outlawed, uh, you know, Western education or, or European education. Those same African-Americans, you know, didn't, uh, were, didn't, did not find themselves in agreement with that. 
So I point that out because when the international media is trying to defame the Dominican Republic and refer to the Dominican Republic as racist, they fail to acknowledge, one, that the same African Americans that they, they, they like to protect felt better in the Dominican Republic than they did in, uh, in Pennsylvania or America. And they also fail to mention that the Haitians that they like to paint like the, the good guys while painting us like the bad guys, the Haitians implemented a system where they outlawed Christianity that was nowhere near in line with the beliefs of those black Pennsylvanians that came over there to settle. In 1871, the United States created the Santo Domingo Commission that was spearheaded by a, a former slave called Frederick Douglass. And Frederick Douglass went to Haiti, uh, not to Haiti, he went to Samana to talk to the freed Pennsylvanians and basically get an idea of what was going through their minds. Why? Because the Haitian Revolution scared the living crap out of the United States uh, the same way that it scared the living crap out of France, Brazil, and every other country in which uh, European folks were enslaving Africans. So Frederick Douglass was sent over there to gauge the temperature of those black Pennsylvanians uh, on behalf of the United States because the United States wanted to know if these black Pennsylvanians were going to espouse the same sort of reverse slavery or black supremacy mentality that the Haitians had adopted. In that process, Frederick Douglass brought these medallions that he gave to all the, the, the freed Pennsylvanian uh, uh, black, uh, black Americans to tell them, hey, um, we want to know how you guys are feeling. We also want to let you guys know that you guys are still welcome to the United States. We're giving you th this medallion. It's a citizenship medallion. So in the event that you want to return to the United States, you're more than welcome to do so. But those black Americans were so happy in Samana that they basically threw away the medallions. They say, hey, Frederick Douglass, thank you so much for the for the, for the the offer, for the uh, for the outreach. But we prefer to live in the Dominican Republic because as, you know, as freed, uh, uh, freed blacks, we feel way more comfortable here. The only problem that they had was the fact that Haiti was trying to implement this system that outlawed Christianity. But in 1844, when the Dominican Liberation Movement succeeded and the Dominican uh, Republic was able to break free from Haitian occupation, that problem was gone. So I tell you this because in international media, the, we're, we're constantly defamed as this country where we have racism, this country where the only solution is to combine the two parts of the island and uh, to support Haiti, but never to support the Dominican Republic. And it's, it's, really, it's really disgusting because when you think of it, the people responsible for slavery, the European powers, and the people who were responsible for, for creating the problems that Haiti went through were France. In France, in 1825, indemnified uh, Haiti and uh, basically blamed Haiti for, for the massacre of their citizens and forced them to take out these massive loans with these crazy interest rates that they would never be able to repay and turned Haiti into what used to be the richest colony in the world into the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere and caused all of their problems. So it is, it is disgusting to see European powers and, 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 uh, and, and great empires accuse the Dominican Republic, which was really a, a small underdog, um, uh, of the crimes that they themselves committed. So to recap, the two most important things, the two most important lessons that all Dominicans should know about and the international media that tries to defame us are one, that the Parsley Massacre was not caused because of some sort of Dominican racism or some sort of a, a genocidal instinct that we as a society hold. That Parsley Massacre was caused because of the mega, megalomaniac retribution of Ra Rafael Leonidas Trujillo. That's point number one. And point number two is that people need to understand what happened with that African Methodist church that fled from Pennsylvania to the Dominican Republic, understand that even those black, that those black Americans felt better in the Dominican Republic than in the United States, where a lot of these modern day claims that were racist come from. 
and also understand that they did not like living under Haitian rule, just as the European, uh, the Dominicans of European descent did not like living under Haitian rule. So I am calling on everybody to be aware of those two incidents, of those two historical lessons, the 1937 Parsley Massacre and the 1824 relocation of black Americans from Pennsylvania to the Dominican Republic, become 100% knowledgeable of what happened there because in this information warfare, those two, those two facts are gonna be your secret weapons to defend yourselves. And you're gonna defend yourselves from an attack on your international image and your reputation as being perpetrated by the World Economic Forum George Soros, the Clinton Foundation, the Democrat Party, and all these international elements that are trying to make you look like the bad guy in order to take away your sovereignty and once again colonize this island.